and welcome to Gardening Australia, the program where we share our love of gardening with you so that we can all a greener world. And with that in mind, let's have a look at this week's program. This week, my good friend John discovers that when an artist and a designer get together to create a garden, the result can be both simple and... So what happens when you put two talented people together to create a garden? Well, as John found out, it can cause an explosion of creativity. Bernadette Ollie is a garden designer, but between her work and four children, she could not find the time to redesign her garden to suit her family's lifestyle. So she got some help from landscape designer Kate Seddon. Bernadette was so welcoming and so open to change, and I felt very comfortable about the way she wanted to work, which was much less uh, structured and organised than I normally work with clients. She didn't want a series of detailed drawings, she just wanted some concepts basically sketched out and then together we were going to select a plant palette that suited. I actually talked to Kate and then I realised I'd get on very well with her so I thought we'll just go ahead and it was quite a loose organic process. And the plants that I already had you liked and so we sort of understood that we are on the same wavelength. The result of Kate and Bernadette's collaboration is a garden that's anything but normal. Sure, there are the ubiquitous plants around, things like bay, rosemary and box, but there are also other plants which you don't expect to see. Aloe, miscanthuses and lemongrass. And who puts beetroot in amongst their ornamental plantings? Well, they do here and they look fantastic. Kate and Bernadette have really pushed the envelope of eclecticism here. Where did they start? I wanted a low maintenance garden with uh, drought tolerant plants. I wanted, um, I wanted to be very interesting and I wanted to use strong architectural plants and textures and shapes, but I didn't want a very colourful garden um, and I wanted to be really easy to be in. Now one of the things I really love is the way in which you've got the clump of plants on the end of the terrace here, the decking. What we really wanted to do was we wanted to bring the deck integrated into the garden more. Bernadette had some wonderful sculptural plants already in pots, so we've just arranged them here in a lovely formation and it then continues down at the ground level where we, there's sprawling plants coming out onto the topping here. And we've repeated these elements of sort of textural contrast like between the cycad and the cotyledon which are so strikingly different but they work so beautifully together as do a number of other planting combinations out in the garden. Contrasts in colour and texture and form and uh, all coming together in such beautiful little vignettes. So really this encapsulates the spirit that you've used elsewhere in the garden. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. That freedom to put what you want, what you think works together, as long as they're growing looks similar, um, and just put it there and see how it goes and it works really well. So, Kate and Bernadette have related their garden to its setting, borrowing the exquisite gum as a visual element, but also as a design driver in the selection of foliage colour. The interesting juxtapositioning of plants is reflected in the use of the concrete seats that contrast with the garden's generally curvilinear form. Well, it's such a lovely sense of the void within really quite um, a, a full garden. There's quite mm. a lot of low-level planting. In time, there will be quite a lot of tree cover. And really, it felt like there needed to be space to counterbalance that, to give that restful sense of, of a peaceful place. Yeah, and somewhere for the family to go so the kids can come and gather around with their umpteen friends and sometimes light a brazier in winter and sit around or have a drink or bring the table down and eat down here. Um, so it's very nice for them to feel there's another area to go to apart from the deck, which is straight off the house. And another thing that occurs to me, as contrasting and diverse as these plants are, they definitely have one thing in common. They're tough. Yeah, because we're away a lot and, um, and certainly the people that live here with us, our kids, wouldn't even think watering the garden. <laughs> so it has to survive lots of weeks and months of weekends on its own. So, and it does a great job. Yeah. And I think tough plants are to be admired. Oh, and there's so many beautiful specimens out there. I mean, we've got some Coria, we've got more Euphorbia species, uh, we have Aloe and Banksia, um, there's Acacia cognata, the lovely little lime green cousin it plant, I call it, yeah. um, and some uh, Formiums, and the Plectranthus and the Santolina, which are echoing the greys up in the neighbouring tree, are also incredibly uh, hardy plants and, and allow this sort of sprawling effect, which we then juxtapose. Uh, forms like the formium and the uh, agave. Bernadette has managed to create the most wonderful oasis here for her family. But look what suddenly sprung up next door. 
It's the story of so many of our suburbs, large, overbearing buildings. So what's the solution? One way of addressing it would be to have a sculptural section of fencing that sits high. And, and the other thing could be to have a pergola that goes on this side of the deck, it goes across and sails onto the top of the wall over there and it's slatted wood. No matter what solution Kate and Bernadette go for, given their success so this garden, I'm sure it'll be a winner. Oh look, we've had a fantastic time working together. I think we've got a lot of um, sympathy for each other's ideas. Yeah, and it's been a lot of fun. It's been very enjoyable. That's another great thing. Yeah. Getting the job done, but it's been good.